Hi, I'm Mimi Fox, and welcome to Jazz Performance. In my Jazz Anatomy course, I picked five very common jazz progressions and jazz concepts that happen in thousands of tunes. I picked a major blues, a minor blues, a major and minor 251, and modal playing. And what I did is I dissected each of those concepts completely, both in single line playing and comping. So both soloing ideas and chordal ideas that you could use for all of these different concepts. In jazz performance, I actually take these ideas and use them in a performance situation quite freely where I'm playing and blowing over the tunes. And I think that what you'll realize is that there's a deep connection between what you study and what you play. If you put in the time practicing, you will be able to take these ideas to the bandstand. In graduated solos, what you found is you found me playing over five basic jazz tunes, five basic simple patterns, and getting more intricate as we went on from solo to solo, starting with a simple solo and then into a more intricate solo, which would be like a logical second chorus, and then finally where I'm playing freely over these tunes. In jazz performance, I'm doing the same thing, only in a live playing situation. So you can hear the thematic development that I also demonstrated very in great detail in graduated solos, where I start simply playing a few notes using a few basic concepts, maybe a few blues scales, and then get on to more complicated compound phrases and bebop lines and maybe some double time lines. And so now you can actually hear that the study that you put into graduated solos is actually the fruit of the labor is actually happens in a playing situation in jazz performance where you can actually hear all of this thematic development happening step by step. In Flying Solo, which is my guide for the solo jazz guitarist, I outline so many important concepts and really dissect them that the solo jazz guitarist needs. Walking bass lines while comping chords, full command of arpeggios, use of harmonics both artificial and naturally occurring, the use of pedal points and open strings, and all of the beautiful qualities that you have in the guitar that you have available to you with the guitar as a solo medium. And in jazz performance, you can actually hear me play both extended intros on some pieces and two you know, beautiful solo guitar pieces where I've taken all of this, all of the ideas that I talk about in flying solo and I actually put them into use in a playing context played very freely and very openly on these two solo arrangements. So if you listen closely and study hard, you're going to see that there is a seamless connection between what I talk about or what we call what happens in the classroom and what actually happens in a performance situation. They're deeply connected and it's a seamless line between both of them. In jazz performance, I am taking the 10 tunes that I recorded on my most recent DVD, Live at the Palladium, and we are breaking them down in some fascinating ways. I have taken four or five different concepts from each of these tunes, four or five really uh, important core ideas that I'm using, whether it may be a whole tone scale or pedal point or open strings or compound phrases or uh, sw you know swept arpeggios over a sus4 chord there's a lot of different ideas that I'm using and we will actually use these ideas and I will show you how I am using them in this performance and there's also something very special which is kind of like a director's commentary so you'll be able to get real insight into what I was feeling and thinking and what was going on in the trio with the interaction between all of us it's quite fascinating because and it's, it's interesting for me looking back at what I played and then having a little distance from it and being able to respond and say, well, here I'm using the whole tone scale. Listen to the interaction with me and the drummer here. So there's a wealth of information here for you. All of 
my solos here are transcribed and there's a lot of information here if you study the solos piece by piece. Now, you know, what I used to do when I was transcribing solos is that I would take a whole Pat Martino solo and memorize it note for note. You don't necessarily have to do that. It doesn't have to be quite as laborious a process. You could decide to just take one chorus of a blues, maybe where I'm really wailing and you, you're getting just just what you want. So feel free to, to pick and choose little bits of, of the solo. But remember, it's very important to analyze what you're doing so you can take it and use it on the bandstand yourself. Take it and use it at the next jam session or at the next rehearsal when you're playing so that these ideas become integrated into your playing and become part of your vocabulary. All right, well, that's enough verbiage. How about we dig into jazz performance and have some fun? Thank you very much.